not gonna have any unprofessional thing happening to it. It's just gonna be so tight and clean and pretty. All of those things in life that just makes you go all whimpering. Every major economic, social, political shift of the last 50 years in China's history will be reflected in this drama. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie and good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 人世间, a lifelong journey is a whopping 58 episodes drama that's being aired on multiple platforms online and also on satellite television right now. It is directed by Li Lu, who is also the director of the previously very well-received Renmin de Mingyi, in the name of the people. He is also the producer of this drama. If you look at this production's producer makeup, it's pretty impressive, including China Central Television, including multiple propaganda department of different provinces. Jiangsu and Jilin, as this drama actually touches on those provinces' storyline, it also involves Tencent, Aichiyi, also involves Xinli and a couple of other privately owned production companies. It is no surprise that this drama involves so many people and such a big team because it is based on a very highly claimed novel with the same title, Ren Shi Jian, written by the author Liang Xiaosheng. This novel is the winner of the 10th Mao Dun Literature Award, which happened in 2019. And this award, Mao Dun Jiang, is the highest literature award within China, specifically designed for long-form novels. So this is a very heavyweight original work, although once it got adapted to screen as a television, it actually received a lot of changes, a lot of adaptation work. The drama is led by a crazy ensemble cast. The name of the cast, when you read it out, sounds like a short list for a major drama or film award. Lei Jiaying, Xin Baiqing, Song Jia, Ding Yong, Dai, Sa Ren Na, Song Chunli, Ying Tao, more and more, many more people. Pretty incredible that they get all those people in one drama. And you know, because of the nature of this type of production, looking at its producers and what it's based on, this is definitely not aimed at making a commercial impact or get fandom in. This is proper serious drama. So far, I've watched the 26 episodes of it, less than half, but definitely good enough number to make a video on. I'll give it 2.67. <laughs> even eight at this point, goat mine. Only reason not giving it three at this point is it's still more than halfway to go. It could still run into a couple of problems that I can see starting from now, kind of. But honestly, the body line, which is the bottom line of this drama's rating for me, starts at two goat mine. It can only go up from there. First brief introduction, because it's a family saga, Drama, think about Downton Abbey, basically. How can you summarize the whole thing in one sentence? Impossible. Too many people, too many different couples, too many angles, too many things touched on. It is focused on starting a tiny family with five people at the very end of 1960s in China in a northeastern province's city slum place. Mother and father and their three children, older brother, older sister, younger brother. Because it's a family saga that runs five decades long later, more generation, more people, you know, their grandchildren, grandchildren's grandchildren are gonna show up. On the positive end, first, starting with the most basic, production quality, the best I've seen in 2022 so far, although 2022 has only happened one month and a half <laughs> at this point. I mean, I can see maybe there will be a couple of more dramas that will be on par in terms of production quality, but exceeding a lot, unlikely. Last year, when it released its first trailer, because it finished shooting at the middle of August last year, and then late last year, they released the first trailer. And I said in my weekly video, when I saw that trailer, I was super impressed and made me really want to watch the drama because it's a very poetic trailer of a lot of cutaway shots. Train running with steam of extreme close up of like hands and feet of small things in the household, like a clock running or something. It's all very poetic cutaway shots edited together with music, but it feels so elegant and beautiful. So at that moment, I know like this is major heavyweight drama, not gonna have any unprofessional thing happening to it. It's just gonna be so tight and clean and pretty. Although it is focused on this small family that has very little money, 
in the beginning. So you're not gonna see glamour and glitter on camera. But even when it's shooting the tiny streets and the snow covered lanes, the very bare minimum material things for existence for this family, it's still done with such taste and elegance. The rich color, the beautiful angles, uh, the lens that they pick for certain shots is just very beautiful. But that's only on the visual end. On the other end of things, music, editing, even like sound recording, everything is just so properly and well done. So the best I've seen this year so far. Second thing definitely comes to the cost. Great cost. Because it has so many golden actors and actresses of our age, it's just impossible to go through them one by one. I'll just talk about a couple of people that come across particularly strong to me. First definitely is the leading actor Lei Jiaying. Although this is an ensemble drama, we can still say if we have to pick out a couple that's like the lead of the drama, it would be Lei Jiaying and In Tao. He plays the youngest son of this family at the beginning of the narrative. In Tao is his wife. For Lei Jiaying, a lot of people probably don't realize he's not that old. He's born in 83, so he was only 38 when he filmed this drama. Not that old, okay? But he appears to be more mature than he is. At the beginning of the drama, there was a um, couple of episodes that he's supposed to be early 20s or even like late teens years and with his very mature face. Does make you feel a little bit weird that pulling a teenager is definitely not <laughs> what he can do now. But once you go over those couple of episodes, it no longer bothers you. He's just such a great actor. Even though I think everybody I come across, I talk to, talking about Lei Jiaying, everyone is saying he's such a great actor. I still feel he's underrated. He can play period dramas, Chang'an Sha Shuchen fighting scenes make it very convincing. He can also play contemporary dramas, even comedies, things that are very now. <laughs> he has very little limit. And he's definitely one of those actors, I would say, just not sailing on his looks at all. He looks like an average guy that when you walk past on the street, you would never even bother to look twice. But he's the type of actor who can regenerate reality in its detail, in its natural flow that you don't feel you're watching someone acting at all. Has the ability to wake up the empathy from the audience's side. If it wasn't for him playing Zhou Bingkun, this character for this drama, it wouldn't be the same drama for me. I also have to talk about the actor Ding Yong Dai, who played the father. He probably best known to my audiences as the emperor in Nirvana in Fire. He can play emperor, he can play a worker. <laughs> He's like the old actor who are so solid in their training, who can pull off anything. There are a couple of scenes with him and his children in this drama and with the wife that will definitely make you tear up and probably sob like a baby for sure if you watch his drama. Like I don't see how people don't cry of a couple of scenes with him in it and his portrayal of this old-fashioned father of an old-fashioned normal Chinese family is just so right. <laughs> Some of his facial expressions, the way he talks, the way he comes across reminds me of my own father and a lot of other fathers I've seen. I think there's a lot of common human thing in his acting that even though if you're not Chinese and you didn't go through the particular time as those characters probably will remind you of some of the older male people in your family who, who are like that. And then Sa Runa, the actress who plays Lei Jiaying's mother. This character is definitely not perfect. She cannot read and she has very limited perspective as a domestic housewife of that generation who never really received an education at all. She will remind you of the type of, by nature, really kind and generous woman, but then because of the limit, the time and her circumstances give her, wouldn't be the most ideal person to deal with all the time, still has such depth of emotion and kindness and love particularly her scene with Lei Jiaying's scene because they are the tightest kind of family kingship pair characters in this drama due to that for a long time the older brother and older sister of this family are not at home. It's only the youngest son and the mother are most of the time with each other. They have so many golden moments acting gold 
for you to watch. I, I'm only talking about these three, but really, In Tao, Song Chunli, Xin Baiqing, Song Jia, all those actors are very, 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 very good. <laughs> so, if you want to look at good actors doing proper acting, no joke, not even a trace of like fandom and whatever, like commercialized stuff and blah. It's just great storytelling and great acting. You should go and watch this drama. Like it shows you the standard of the best of the best in China. The third great thing about this drama is it has a lot of details. Whether it's on the production design side or actually telling you historical events from the personal angle will give you a really good overall perspective of what life is like for people. And it will start at the middle of Cultural Revolution, leading up to the end of Cultural Revolution, then leading up to the reopening of universities in the 70s, and then economic policy shift, the extremely important thing that influenced China's economy since the 80s, 90s, and up to now, and then how the nationally owned big factories started to break down and how people lose their job at certain times and everyone is sort of forced into finding out their own way of surviving, particularly serious for the provinces in northeastern China. Every major economic, social, political shift of the last 50 years in China's history will be reflected in this drama. Obviously, it gets reflected only from the personal perspectives of individual characters in the story, but watching this drama probably will give you a really good idea of the overall picture of the society. Last thing about this drama, on the positive end, that I think makes it really worth watching is there are so many moments in this drama, small moments, pretty much sprinkled very evenly across all the episodes I've seen now, that will just make you cry. But it's happy cry, it's like the moved cry, it's the human soft part, all of those things in life that just makes you go all <laughs> whimpering. And if I have to keep saying, there are a lot of other good things about this drama, but the video is gonna get too long. So let's talk about a couple of things I'm worried about this drama. First thing is, um, it's really long. Okay, 58 episodes. I think as a Chinese person, it's impossible for me to have a totally outside perspective of this drama, because a lot of the things that the drama depicts I have memories of, therefore it's easy for me to have very strong emotional reactions to a lot of the things in the drama. But then if you are totally unrelated to this part of the world's history, it probably will be a different watching experience, at least for a lot of things that doesn't need to be clearly explained in this drama, but every Chinese person would get, it will be harder for international audiences to understand what they're referring to and why people have certain reactions. The other thing about this drama that I worry about is I never read this novel word by word, but I did look at, again, the synopsis and what happens to individual characters because it talks about such a long time span, 50 years. That's like what? Four times the time span of um, Downton Abbey? <laughs> and think about Downton Abbey, how many things have happened, right? For individual characters in that drama, this is like multiply that by four. And because it has too many characters and too long a time, eventually you're gonna end up with a huge mess of way too many. I wouldn't say mellow, but <laughs> dramatic things. Although I know in reality, when you have a big family and a long time, you know, in this family, a lot of crap happens and probably reality is more dramatic and fantastical than dramas. Still, when you present that to the audiences, in a very concentrated form, around 40 hours in total, talking about this whole thing, it has the concentration effect that may just make people go, come on, that's just too dramatized. I worry about a little bit of the type of the Bond drama, Qiao Jia the Er Nu thing happening to this drama too. I didn't watch through it minute by minute. As I watch this drama, I just feel like my emotion and blood pressure is going up and down too much. And so for my own good, I'm gonna stop watching the drama. I don't think for Ren Shijian lifelong journey, it's gonna get that extreme, judging by so far how it's telling its story. But I think by the end of 58 episodes, it's still gonna collect way too much drama in one drama. And it really depends on how well the storyteller can offset that with the way it's told so that it doesn't appear to be overly gaoxie. In another way, I think the clever thing about last year's Min Ning Tang, that drama is first it's super short, then they picked a very concentrated time span, about the 80s and 90s, that's it. I'm not gonna give you more decades to 
talk about and then 10 times more characters so that there's only that much that can happen to that many people within that much time so all in all so far this drama made me very happy it's definitely a drama worth watching it will present you with the high-end production quality of Chinese drama land show you what really great acting great actors actresses good script quality can do and then for sure if you are curious about Chinese society from the perspective of an ordinary person running across half a century from pretty much now counting backwards this is a very good setting up the overall perspective drama for you that will be the end of the first impression video from Avenue X looking at the drama Ren Shijian a lifelong journey thank you for watching I'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long and happy drama watching